What is up Airsofters? My name is Lane and welcome back to the BB Warrior. In today's video we're going to be doing another one of our Q&A videos which was made possible by all of you who asked questions and I've picked out some fun topics for today such as talking about real firearms, how to grow and get better as a player, and as well my opinion on some of the more popular airsoft rifles that are out there. Before we get into today's video though I want to say two things. Make sure that you never miss any of the videos that we post here by hitting that subscribe button down below and while you're at it hit that bell icon next to it. Keeps you updated. You can get notifications when I post brand new videos every single Friday. Friday. And as well, I just want to say a huge thank to the sponsor of today's video, MC Kydex. We'll be talking about them a little bit more later in the video, but I am absolutely in love with some of their products, guys. They make more than just holsters, which you'll find at a typical Kydex company. Uh, they make the Messenger Radio Carrier, which we took a look at a while ago, and I think that they absolutely make some fantastic products. But why don't we dive into the first question for today's Q&A. Andrew asks if I will ever convert from Airsoft over to real firearms. Well, personally for me, I think that these two hobbies can coexist, and the reason why I say that is because my interests for airsoft are not my same, or not the same interest for real firearms. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, I live in New York State, and here in New York there's a lot of restrictions on semi-automatic rifles with detachable magazines. So you don't see a lot of ARs, you don't see a lot of AKs, there are exceptions, don't get me wrong, but that's not what I do a lot of shooting with, so my tastes and kind of what I have enjoyed primarily has been bolt action and distance shooting. This is something that I'd like to get into more. However, this will in no way replace my interest in airsoft because I play airsoft and I enjoy airsoft for completely different reasons and why I enjoy actual firearms. Um, eventually, I would like to get into collecting military firearms, you know, surplus firearms, things that are either unique or... Um, I really like bolt action rifles as well, you know, Enfields, Gewehr 98s, not Mosin and the Gants. Mosin and the Gants are communist garbage, but rifles like that, that is what I enjoy. And that is definitely not what I enjoy in Airsoft. Now, if I had $1,000 to spend on one or the other, 9 out of 10 times it would be Airsoft because there's so much more associated with it. It's what I do more often. It's what I honestly enjoy more. That's a more prevalent hobby in my life than actual firearms, hence why I run an Airsoft channel. But to answer your question, no, I, I don't see it ever replacing Airsoft for me. Um, I, I love what I do in Airsoft. I love what I do for the channel, obviously. So I don't think that it would replace it. Um, I never really covered this in videos because truthfully, you know, I'm not a gun channel and no one's ever asked for it before. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe one day in a vlog or something like that, but no, I don't think that firearms will actually replace airsoft for me, at least any time in the future. Now guys, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, MC Kydex. This is a company that I have used myself, I've had a chance to meet the owners, get an idea of how things are done there, and they make some really great holsters, and the best part, in my opinion, they're airsofters just like you and I. I always try to support other people who are in this business. As someone who is a small business owner themselves, I understand everything that goes into it. And I think that they make a fantastic product. Whether you're looking for a holster for your airsoft or actual firearm, or if you're looking for, you know, other products that are made out of Kydex, they make fantastic holders for Anola Gaze, for Thunderbees, and at the same time, probably my favorite product from them has been the Messenger Radio Carrier, which we actually took a look at in a review a couple of months ago, and I was in love with it. So if you're looking for a company, if you're looking for a great holster, if you're looking for a way to hold your Baofeng radio or the grenades you bring on the field with easy access, take a look at MC Kydex. Their information will be down in the description below. I am in love with their products, and I can guarantee that you guys are going to be seeing more of their products here on the channel because I have loved every single one that I've gotten my hands on. But let's move into the next question. Jackson asks, as a referee myself, I watch players make mistakes that I can learn from. What are some of the most common mistakes that you typically see on the field? Well, I would say one of the most common mistakes that I make, and we'll talk about the uh, beginning of this question more in a minute, how to grow as a player yourself. I see a lot of people who don't shoot offhanded when they're shooting from buildings. So what do I mean by that? Well, they always go for the right-hand corner of the building. They'll never shoot to their offhand side, which would be shooting left-handed for most people out there, and shoot from that side of the building. That's one of those things that I notice that a lot of players don't do, but that can give you such a great advantage on the field, because think about it this way. If you continue to peek the same corner, the same angle, over and over, they're going to know where to shoot. And if you're doing it on a certain reputation, or repu repetition, excuse me, you're asking to get hit and you're going to be that guy walking back to the dead box, not the player shooting at you. So mixing it up, making sure that you are shooting offhanded, thinking about different angles and different approaches that you can use to a situation is a fantastic way to immediately become a better player on the field in my opinion. And touching on the beginning of your question earlier, watching other people make mistakes and thinking about your own mistakes is a great way to evolve as a player. 
So think about it this way. When you die, think about it. Why did I die? Most of the times when I die, it's because, you know, I didn't check my corners. I rushed up farther than I honestly should have. And that's what led me going back to the dead box. So if you think about it, every time you die, think, well, what killed me? Why did I die? And what could I have done differently to prevent that? Thinking about that, at least for myself, this is my own personal experiences here, that has led to me becoming a better player. Because there are things that I think about, things that I notice that continually lead to me dying. Like, uh, for example, I wasn't very good at reloading in really bad situations. So I pop a corner, you know, I gotta reload, I don't get that speed reload off, and typically I would get rushed and die. That's something that I noticed that I needed to work on, so I got better, I adjusted my kit as needed, so now I have a much faster reload, or if I'm in a really bad situation, I have a quick draw for my handgun to make sure that that guy's walking back to the dead box, and I'm not. So that would actually be one of my greatest pieces of advice for other players, is think about how you die, think about what you could have done differently in that situation, and one of the things that I noticed the worst would be people who don't shoot offhand, and people who don't mix it up, and just make themselves essentially a peeping target every couple of seconds for the enemy. Drew asks if the Umbrella Armory Crytek line is worth it. Now, Umbrella Armory makes fantastic guns, don't get me wrong. As someone who's gotten a chance to get behind multiple of them from different years of production, Umbrella makes fantastic airsoft guns. There's no way of skirting around that. The question is if you will get what you pay for, or if the value will be worth what you pay for, I should say. As someone who plays Airsoft every single chance that they get, I try to play at least two times a month during the slow season, and it hasn't been so for the last month or so, but I digress. For me, I could see it being worth it, because I play a lot. This is, a, some, this is something that I'm really involved in. It's a hobby that I really enjoy. But for someone who's a little bit more casually into Airsoft, you know, someone who maybe plays every once in a while, or they only go to a couple ops a year if that's their thing, I don't think Umbrella Armory starts to become that worth it. Think about it this time. Think about it this way. How often you pay, or how the price of it divided by how often you pay is going to be that value. How much it's going to cost every time you go to play. If you play two times a year and you buy a $1,200 gun, every time you play that costs you $600. But if you go out and buy a $1,200 gun and you play, you know, 50 times a year. I'm not going to do that math because apparently I don't know it in my head. You're going to get a much better uh, price per use on that, I guess you could say. It's going to be much more worth it. I think that a lot of airsofters, again, the more casual airsofters that play every once in a while, I think for what they do, they would just be fine going out and buying a regular Crytac, buy an Avalon. I think there's a lot of people that don't need an umbrella armory gun, but for those of you who are really invested in airsoft, I think that they're absolutely worth it. If you can swallow the price point and you think they're going to use it often enough, absolutely go with one. They're fantastic airsoft guns from personal experience. ASOG308 asks, if you can make another military clone rifle other than your Mark 18, what would it be? So I don't do a lot of clone building because I don't really do impression kits anymore, but I, I will give two examples that I would be really partial to. I would love a Acid Gambit or Black Hawk Down AR. I think that they are a really sexy looking rifle because they're in this transitional period, I guess you could say, where it's like not super kitted out, like once you started getting into Knight's Armament, the quad rails, EOTech, stuff like that. But it's not just bare iron sights because when I build rifles and when I've thought about doing older impressions, actual usage comes to mind and I like to have a kit that is efficient as well as looks cool. I think that's like the perfect period if I was to build a kit where it's still going to be efficient and useful, but I'm still going to have the things that I really like about modern rifles, like red dot sights and, you know, a flashlight on the end of the gun. So that's like one of my like favorite builds of all time. My buddy Spartan 117GW, just a fantastic kit from that period. And I think that it's just such a great aesthetic and I love the look of that gun. Other than that, um... I am working on a clone AK-74U that's really been on the back burner for a couple years now, admittedly. Um, that's my LCT AK that we took a look at in a review a couple months ago. That's really the only clone builds that I'm working on. I do have a 416 upper somewhere around here that can fit on that Mark 18 lower, so I'm thinking about doing like an old school 416 back when they were just the upper kits that were thrown onto AR lowers. I think that'd be really cool to do as well, but... Um, you know, just getting the money, getting the time to do it when there's other projects I want to work on, I've kind of uh, kept those, again, on the back burner. Doomsday Clown asks, so the Wolverine Airsoft MTW, nay or yay, and why? Well, this is going to be a very biased um, answer, but I own a Wolverine MTW, for those of you who do not know. 
this guy right here. If you're looking to get into HPA, buy one. This is the best airsoft gun I have ever owned. And keep in mind, I have no association with Wolverine Airsoft, anything like that. I paid full retail price for this gun. I've gotten every penny out of it. It is expensive. Don't, don't get me wrong. This is an expensive purchase. And just like we talked about with Umbrella Armories, it's one of those things, how much value are you going to get from it? How often are you going to use it? It's going to determine if it's worth it for you. But for me, as a player who really takes airsoft seriously, I love this gun. I will never need another HPA M4, and I think that that's really where this thing shines, is that there's just so much that this can do that its competitors can't. You'll never have to worry about alignment, installing aftermarket parts, such as the Wraith, the Arrow, other rails on here. This takes airsoft and real rails. No one else does that in this industry. None of the competitors in HPA can do that. So if you're looking for an HPA M4, there is no reason that you would not buy a Wolverine Airsoft MTW. Um, actually, like just the other day, they released this with the Reaper, which is the semi-automatic version of their engine. The reason why I haven't done a review on this is, you know, twofold. One, I'm very biased towards this gun because I love it and I can't find anything negative to say about it. But at the same time, I want to use it in other ways. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I want to use this in ways that I haven't yet, because I have a very particular play style, I guess you could say. And just with the weather outside and the fields that I've been able to go to, there's some things that I haven't been able to do with this gun. I haven't been able to take it to a national op yet. I haven't really used it like a speed softer, I guess you could say. I haven't used it as a DMR yet. Those are a lot of things I want to try with the Wolverine Airsoft MTW before I do a dedicated review on it. And I know that I'm not going to be the first person to put out a review of the Wolverine MTW, but I want to make sure that it is the best review I can possibly do, talking about using this gun in every single way imaginable. Because I do think that this is such a good product, and I want to be able to guarantee with one of my reviews, it can be used any way you want to. So if you're looking to get Wolverine Air Airsoft MTW, through the time that I've put through this gun, doing some CQB, doing some open plays, it's a fantastic gun. It's incredibly well built, but at the same time, it's lightweight. It's just, it's a good airsoft gun. Like there's no, there's like nothing that I've been able to find about this gun that I genuinely dislike. It takes a lot of aftermarket part support for, uh, you know, hop up and barrel. You can use any hop up, any barrel that you want to. In here, again, it takes airsoft spec and real spec rails. You can swap out for a wraith or an arrow if you don't like having a line. There's so much that you can do with the Wolverine Airsoft MTW, and I know that I'm just continuing to say nice things about this gun, but I really do love it. And if you're looking to buy one, I'd wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly recommend one. Chris asks, what's the best pistol for cold weather? Now, I know that when this video goes live, um, this week has been really bad for the Midwest and the Northeast. We've been getting a lot of snow, a lot of really, really cold weather in the negative, so stay safe out there, guys, if it's continuing to move on when this is posted. If you're looking for a outdoor or a cold weather pistol, cross off any option that is green gas powered. Why do I say that? Well, green gas simply just doesn't have the pressure during the cold, really anything below 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in my opinion, to work reliably. You'd be much better off with CO2 or an HPA tap. Now, if you HPA tap your pistol, you can go ahead and use green gas pistols, use whatever you would want because you don't have to worry about those issues. But if you're just looking for something to carry on your hip as a backup, CO2 is going to be your option. Now, there are a couple of them that I would personally recommend, and they're actually both from Elite Force. I recommend the 1911 TAC. They are incredibly good and reliable pistols for their price point of just at 100 bucks or a little bit higher, depending on which model you get. And as well, the Elite Force USP, the CO2 one, is also a fantastic pistol that I would wholeheartedly recommend as well. So when you're looking for a pistol for the weather, or for the cold weather, look for CO2 and make sure that you're keeping your O-rings um, lubricated and things like that. They're going to prolong the life of your airsoft gun and make sure that it's going to perform well when you bring it out into those colder weathers. Um, when you're using CO2, you can really get pretty low because it has so much more pressure behind it than green gas. That's why I wholeheartedly recommend them for using in the cold weather. That is going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for staying until the end. Again, a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, MC Kydex. Make sure to check them out with the information down in the description below. But if you enjoyed today's video, you know, make sure to keep your eye out for the next Q&A video. I always ask it down in the community tab looking for your guys' questions. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for brand new airsoft videos every single Friday. If you want to get notifications, hit the bell icon right next to that subscribe button. Make sure to check us out on social media. Links are down in the description below, right next to the stuff for MC Kydex. But this has been Lane from the BB Warrior doing another Q&A video for you guys. And I'll see you all next time.